We're back in the hay field. Crazy weather. It's hard to know which way to turn. We're wanting to dry all this hay out. We cut it two days ago, fluffed it yesterday. We're fluffing it again. We're between 40 and 55% moisture right now with about a 35% chance of some afternoon thunderstorms today. So we're kind of in that weird place of, do you rake it today, bale what you can, and then wrap that hay and not have any dry hay? Or do you roll the dice and potentially have hay that gets rained on? Even if we started baling, raking and baling here shortly, I don't think we could get it all done today, but we might could. What we're gonna do? Need a decision now. If it were just me, I would start baling right now and wrap some. Because I know that even if the rain doesn't hit, it's not gonna hurt to put 50 or 70 more rolls up wrapped. But if it does, then you at least got that many of that didn't get rained on. But that's just my two cents. It's probably worth one cent. If that. It's fair enough. All right, well, y'all stay tuned and we'll figure out a game plan. We made the decision to hold off on bailing anything. We could have bailed it and wrapped it but we don't really need more wrapped hay. We really need some dry hay. Um, we have fluffed everything one time and then half of it has been fluffed a second time. We were waiting to see what the storm was gonna do, but um, I'll show you what we think it's gonna do. that right there is headed directly for us yesterday the forecast for today looked great today not so much so it looks like our hay is going to get rained on how much we don't know yet but it's not just rain it's a storm so we'll see but looks like we'll probably be fluffing hay again maybe we can bail it tomorrow depending on how much rain we get but I guess that's just the way it goes sometimes. What are you doing? Killing time. Well, we're back in the hay field. And believe it or not, it did not rain at all yesterday. So as the storm got closer and closer, the worst part of it went barely southwest. We were in a little bit of a green. We probably got a handful of raindrops, but that was it. So we really dodged a bullet on that one and we've got a pretty day ahead. We're just now starting to do a little bit of raking. I'm gonna jump on the other side of the driveway and fluff what didn't get fluffed yesterday. So everything will have been fluffed twice. Uh, Eric's gonna start bailing here shortly and we're gonna try to get this knocked out So y'all come along and uh, let's go make some dry hay Got anything at one point yesterday The hourly said in two hours we had a 97% chance of thunder showers And I told the guy helping us I said basically the only chance we got is get off the tractor and pray and it split like the Red Sea, man, missed us. But we're still sitting here at 19 to 25%. So I'm hoping the rake will expedite this process. Hope it's about to pay for itself. It's a little, we would like to be everything under 20% for something I'm gonna put in a barn. Ideally about 16, but you know, beggars can be choosers. Here it is. 
it's 1228 so the dew hadn't been off of it long so we should be rolling soon You don't see short pants and cowboy hats much. Wasn't too pretty there. See that color difference in the, the hay that's tedded versus what's not. Turning that grass more moisture that as the dew sits on it, it it's uh, well, the grass is wetter underneath where the sun hadn't hit it, so it's flipping it up so it can dry. We really like to, any hay that we're going to, especially crabgrass, if we're going to dry it out and put it in a barn, I want to always fluff it twice. At least if something happens, I feel like I did what I was supposed to do. And then we still check moisture i'm sitting here i'm gonna wait another 30 minutes because it's borderline i really want everything under 20 and yeah once i start it's all gonna dry more that's good but if i start with it borderline it only takes one bale to burn them all down so that's what we're doing in the meantime i'm watching a cowboy with grasshopper legs fluff hay An old house, a John Deere, and a pecan tree. That's living. L-I-V in living. I tell you, those pecan trees, they're about like Ben. They don't get in a hurry. My God, I planted some years ago. They got some years to go too. Good gracious, to get this shade, that thing's old. Comes daddy on the rake. As you can tell on my 30 minute break, I have nothing else to do than to hold the camera and talk to you guys. I'm proud to be here. Thankful for another beautiful day. Follow up on that rake. So made it through a whole hay season with it. That's a Coon GA6501, 6501, double rotary rake. It really pays for itself, not only in the, in the wet hay, to be able to get that hay up off the ground and somewhat fluff it up, but in dry hay, it makes a big difference. Cause like right now, we're trying to pull that moisture out of it. We're, you know, we're kind of anxious to get started. And if we were in a regular V rake, it just kind of drag along, leave that stuff on the ground. But the, it really fluffs it up and lets that air go under it and through it and lets the wind blow through it. It, it truly expedites the drying process, which is why we bought it. So, so far I give it I would give it two thumbs up if I were not holding this camera.
what guys if you haven't tried these celsius they don't pay me to say this wish they did but man those things are good sorry it's a little bumpy celsius in a carhartt koozie belling driving with my knee basically 10 calories but most importantly 200 grams of caffeine so two cups of coffee the only one that's going to pay for that is this john deere because we just sped up no those are good man i enjoy the celsius thanks for the product they didn't send it to me i just thanks for making it Now you can send me some. I like the Arctic vibe, by the way. Let's go bail hat. More importantly, 200 milligrams of caffeine in those Celsius drinks will get you working high speed. I may have said grams earlier, which would be astronomical. 200 milligrams. With all that said, going good I guess you can probably see my dad right over there still raking and what I've done is the inroads we usually rake around the field three times that gives the rake tractor enough room to turn around and then I bail those ends and that clears it up for him so he doesn't have to pick up high if he doesn't want to to go over those existing wind rows so it just makes it quicker for him, easier for the rake man. And those of you who have bailed hay before know that a rake man can make or break your day. They can make it bad or good. And every person that rakes hay should have to bail hay so that they know what they're doing. It works hand in hand. If, if it's hard for you to make a move or a turn in a rake, it's harder with a baler. So that's important. The people that make the drive the best, do the best on rakes are the ones that bell hay. All right, we are at 15 bells. It's the third time we've cut this field this year. I think if it rains, continues to rain, we will get a fourth cutting. So this field has been good to us this year. We put chicken litter on it. We have sprayed it for weeds. We have sprayed it for worms. We have sprayed it for Johnson grass. There's some good crab grasses out here now. So thankful that the worms didn't get us yet. They're getting a lot of fields around here. When, it, when that weather broke and the worms were here, Everybody that had a tractor and a cutter in this county was cutting hay. It doesn't get much better than working with your dad in the hay field. You should try it. How hot are you on a scale of one to 10 right now? Let's see what Benjamin says. Got bubbles, spit it out, man. I 
won't read his response. I'll just say he's pretty hot. It's warm out there. I just got done fluffing. It's about 220. Eric's been bailing for a little bit. His dad's still rocking along, raking. Got some good weather in the hayfield. We don't think of my new hat. I had one that my wife gave me for our anniversary and I took it on vacation in Mexico. And one of the waiters really liked it and he kept, uh, he put it on a couple times and kept commenting on it. So at the end of our trip, I gave it to him. So Farmer Daniel in Mexico, if you're watching, I hope you're enjoying the hat. I got me a new one. I'm, I'm taking a quick water break and I'm gonna go out and just double check some moisture in these windrows. See what we're working with. That that I just fluffed across the road, I would say 75% of it's pretty thin. So not expecting a lot of return on that side. But it's at least all fluff. We got a little bit of a breeze. You can see the trees blowing a little bit, so that's helping dry it on out. Got our handy dandy John Deere moisture tester. So let's go see what we've got. Dodging the rain yesterday was huge. Wouldn't be the end of the world, but it probably would have added another day to our hay, which would put us into being in the hay field on Sunday, as well as a lesser quality hay. I hope he's just cleaning out. Just cleaning out. Yeah. Need the blower? Who are the Braves playing tonight? Uh, the Reds? No. The Marlins? They're not the Reds. That's gonna itch. I gotta be almost out of the net route. I was wondering if you'd changed it out yet. Yeah. Let's go check a little bit of moisture and what he's about to bail. I'm gonna say, um, Yeah, I'm thinking 16, 17%. 18.5, way off. 18.5, that's right where we want to be. We don't really want it any higher than that. But 18.5 is a good spot.
Where do you think we're riding? Well, this where you're where you're at is uh, it's going to be some of the wetter of where I've been, and I would guess it's going to be still 18, 19 percent. 18.5, which would give an average of 18.5. Hey guys, I meant to mention earlier too that we sprayed this field, and by we, I mean my cousin Mark Gibbs sprayed it. Thank you, Mark. You're the man. It's one of those things we're in a tight and yeah, we have our own sprayer, but we also had 30 other things going and the neighbor saw army worms in his field and called and was gracious enough to say, hey, you have worms in your hay field. So we got on the phone, called the local feed mill and Mark sprays for them and he came out, sprayed the herbicide, the insecticide the next day and it's little things like that that make the decision. It costs you a little bit more money, but we didn't have the time to do it and it got done and probably what it cost us for the labor was well saved and more in the amount of hay that was saved from killing those worms. So just wanted to say sometimes it's better to just, if you can't get everything done, hire some stuff done. Thanks Mark, did a good job. We wouldn't have nearly the yield that we have today if it were not for him being efficient, jumping on it, getting that sprayed. So thanks again. I didn't want to take all your credit, Mark. And a passenger. Parade's over. And now they're belling hay. Look at Chloe. Let's keep it straddled, girl. What do you think? I tell you what, just wake me up in a little bit, okay? Okay. He was ready. <laughs> I said he was landing football player. Landing football player. <laughs> what kind of tractor are we in, Landon? Good job. And Chloe's driving, and Daddy's just sitting there just sleeping. <laughs> Daddy's sitting there sleeping. Dad. We're going to bail a little bit and let these kids learn how to bail hay. It's better than sitting at the home on the iPad. And... All right, here we go. Chloe's first bail coming right up. Clever, right there. Chloe and Landon. Good job, Coco. What do you think about that? Great. Nine years old and bailed your first bell of hay. That's pretty cool. There you go. Here, Chloe, you can have it. So we will check back with you later. How do y'all like bell and hay? Good. Been on the tractor for about an hour. Are you getting a little sleepy? I thought so. Show them your, your way you lay down. Let's get creative. All right, let's keep going. Had to go take a quick water break. We're moving along. Steve's moved to the other side of the hay field. Eric's got a full cab. I have to check in and see how many bales we're up to. I'm gonna say 60 bales. He's been kind of picking and choosing where he bales. Some places are a lot thicker, and so the moisture's a little bit higher there. Can y'all hear better now?
He's picking and choosing where he's bailing. Some's dried out a little bit more. So he's jumping back up here. I would say we're halfway done with the bigger side of the driveway. I'll find out how many bales he's got. Whatever it was, it's one more now. So I text Eric to see how many bales we're up to. I've just been going through and lining them up. We've got a probe that will check the moisture in the bales after you've bailed them up. From what I've checked, we're in the 20 to 25% range. So it may be a few days before these get stacked in the barn, but we're moving along. Hopefully we'll get it all bailed today. Eric takes me back. He just spit out number 45, so not quite as many as I thought. But if that's halfway with one side, I was, I'm betting on a hundred, maybe a little bit less on the side we're on. So we'll see. I'm gonna get back to lining some up. Enjoying this pretty day. still moving along everything is raked up it's about 6 15 p.m. still got great weather in sight gotten several bales lined up I think we're right around 80 bales or so it's probably gonna be a little less than what we thought but um, taking a break from lining everything up bringing Eric a uh, little boost anything else This little section you see right here is all that's left for the big side of the driveway. So, I'm gonna say we'll wind up with maybe 150 bales. The bales are a little bit greener than what we wanted. We're trying not to bale hay on armadillo hole. We were trying not to bale hay on Sunday. Maybe we should have, but the way the pop-up storms have been going, we didn't want to risk it. So we'll probably just loosely stack everything. Maybe come haul it about Monday. Loosely stack it in the old chicken house and just kind of monitor the temperature. I'm 
I'm gonna head back home and go check on the chickens. We're getting close to selling chickens again. I've got one house of chickens selling Tuesday, three houses selling Wednesday, and then I believe Eric has chickens selling on Friday of this coming week. Long day. My day started 5.30, 15 hours ago. On a Saturday, got it done though. Yield wasn't very good, but it's third cutting 121 bales, third cutting uh, about six, what, five or six weeks with no rain and army worms mixed in. But it should, should make for a fork cut and probably equivalent to that, I would think. So, hey, it's better than nothing. It really needed a couple more weeks. But the army worms also would have liked for us to have left it for a couple more weeks. So, maybe we'll get a good strong fourth cut. Beautiful afternoon, beautiful sunset. Let's go to the house. Thank you guys, catch you next time. Like, subscribe, do all the things. Thanks for watching. Hey, you get a Bible verse. I believe it is, fact check me but don't. Don't scream at me. Luke 16, 10, basically in a summary talks about a man that can be trusted with a little, can be trusted with a lot, but if you can't be trusted with a little, you can't be trusted with a lot. So look that up. See you guys next time.